rating tuh Faiz sudah ready kan YouTube-nya? Ya ada. Oke, okay, greeting to all. Welcome to the cultural exchange today organized by Stecom University Indonesia and International Transnational Education Association from China. Today I'm not alone. I'm Novita and will be hosting all of you today with my partner, Miss Aisha from ITEA, China. Thank you. Greetings to everyone. Thank you for participating in our event today. We will start with the topic tourism destination that we must be visited during a trip in my country. I am Aisha. Nice to meet and see you all. It's amazing today because we have so many students from around the world and an interesting audience and participants. Right, Miss Novita? What do you think about today? Oh. I agree with you, Miss Aisha. As I know, sometimes some of the country will end for winter and rainy season, and will start in the last of March or beginning of April with summer and spring season. Okay, let's start this new session with passion and enthusiasm for all our participants and audience. Without any further ado, we will start this cultural exchange today. Before we begin, I have a few housekeeping notes here. Today's session is being live streamed on Universitas Techcom YouTube channel. And also, I will read for itinerary today event. And for today event, we will start with the opening speech by Rector from Techcom University, Dr. Joseph Teguh Santoso, represented by Mr. Wibi Ardi Alvianto, and Mr. Benjamin Leong Takang from ITEA, China. And then we will continue with a photo session and we will start the main event for our beloved presenter for the introduced country they all have. And after our presentation, we will continue to take a picture again and time to closing. And for notes here, each presenter will have 10 minutes for presentation, no more than this time. So let's start this event today for next session with... We will start opening speech by Mr. Benjamin Leong. Yeah, for Mr. Benjamin, the time is yours. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Ibu Novita. Uh, just give me one second. Uh, dear distinguished, uh, distinguished like guests and ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is my great pleasure like to welcome you, or like to the opening ceremony of the Cultural Exchange event co-hosted by the uh, Indonesian Computer Society, Stecom University, and also the International Transnational Association. Yeah. We are uh, getting here uh, today to celebrate the cultural diversity and richness of our world and to promote the mutual understanding and of course like to respect among the people of different backgrounds. This event like, is, the, is the platform for us like to showcase and appreciate the beauty and of, of course like the uniqueness of our respect, respective like culture and also like to learn from one another. As a representative of ITR, we are honored uh, to have the opportunity like to co-host this event together with the Stecom University. And uh, we are deeply grateful and also like, uh, you know, for the support for the uh, participation for all, like, you know, the institution and also the individuals that who have like contributed to the success. Through this cultural uh, exchange event, we hope like to foster a sense of like global citizenship and also to inspire all of us to uh, embrace like the differences that make us unique. So while recognizing the common humanity that brought us like you know, together, uh, there are presentation like you know from all the participants today, which is about a tourism destination must be visited uh, in their own country. And also like uh, topics for tomorrow will be authentic cuisine like must try it from their country as well so uh i would like to urge you and also like encourage you all like to anticipate the presentation from all around like you know our participants as we believe like that this will enrich your experience and broaden your horizons you know without being physically physically like in the country once again welcome to the culture exchange event that co-hosted by the stack 
Columbia University and also uh, being supported by Iowa ITL. We hope that you will have a memorable, like, you know, enjoyable time here and that you will live with uh, many, many friends together, new perspective. And of course, like, you know, we some renewed like commitment to building up like a more inclusive and harmonious like we're Thank you so much. Um, back to you, Aisha, and All right. All right, thank you, Mr. Benjamin, for the speech. And the second deliver will be the opening speech by Mr. Ruby R.D. Alviento <coughs> from Stikom University. Okay, thank you, Ms. Aisha. Greeting to all participants and also the honorable, all students and all audience. Thank you uh, for joining this two event. Uh, hello, my name is Vipi Adri Alfiando. I'm a lecturer from the Stecom University. May I first take this as a occasion to pay tribute to all of the audience of this culture exchange with the title, My Country Has um, Interesting Beauty. Held by Stecom University and International Transitional Education Association, China, in collaboration with 11 universities from around the world. It is a great pleasure and an honor for me to deliver a welcome remark at the opening of this cultural exchange event. May I first take this opportunity to express my gratitude and appreciation as well as then cordial welcome to all the audience, in particular, all the speaker of today even. First of all, I would like to express my gratitude to our God, uh, blessing and mercy, the cold assembled in this cultural accent today with the topic, tourism destination must be visited during trip in my country. The honorable of speaker guests today and all audience. I would like to say thank you very much to all speakers that you will present in full ideas according to your field of expertise in this presentation. And it is a great pleasure to welcome all of you to this cultural exchange. I believe this event will improve knowledge and experience of all participants and provide significant scientific contribution. And for participants, we're so glad and welcome all of you for take a part in our cultural action event. And we are very happy to have all of you on this memorable occasion. And for this event, we will know what tourism destination in other country. And we hope this program can make a feel refreshing and feel vacation from presentation to be delivered by our participants we have. And ladies and gentlemen, I hope through this cultural action event, we can get more information about tourism destination must be visited during trips in my country. To conclude, I would like to extend my appreciation to the International Affairs Organization of State University for making this cultural action event. And finally, I wish you to enjoy the program today and for participants to get to know its other country. Thank you. Thank you for Mr. Wibi. And before we start this event, for all participants, please open your camera. I will take a picture. Okay. I will kind of one, two, and three. Once again, one, two, and three. Smile. Thank you. And we will start the presentation by our first student from Stecom University, Indonesia, Mr. Joseph Lim Marcel. Yeah, for Mr. Joseph, the time is yours. Thank you. Uh, hello. Uh, my sound, uh, you, uh, you all can hear my sound, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you. And this is uh, my presentation about today. Uh, you can look my presentation. Okay. Uh, the first thing that I wanna 
tell you is about uh, the interesting place in my country. Uh, like uh, our title in this uh, culture exchange, tourism destination must be visited during trip to Indonesia. Indonesia, of course, is my, my country. And then the first is, uh, I will show you about uh the uh much a lot of place that interesting in indonesia of course uh you can i can uh, i want to show you about any other place that you can visit when you uh, plan to go to indonesia the first uh but uh you know the the time is limit limited uh so i just want to show the three places that bali jakarta or yogyakarta uh to you uh, but you need to know actually there is a lot, uh, much of place that uh, interesting you can explore by yourself uh, after this presentation. Yes, the first is welcome to Indonesia. This is the picture of uh, various place that interesting in, in my country. Uh, there is a Bali, there is a Yogyakarta, there is a beach and there is a temple there is a welcome sign there is a like house house traditional house from uh, the region and then the first is bali the island of gods why bali's uh called the island of gods because there is a uh, a lot of what uh, a lot of some uh what is it uh you can yeah uh, yeah okay i'm sorry uh why bali called the island of gods because there is a lot of religion and then bali is about dynamic culture that is uh like uh they believe that god is uh exists in every creature uh in every life that uh in exist that in bali so the first is bali is a small island in indonesia which is famous for its natural beauty, culture, and art. Uh, you can look uh, like something like Ngaben. Like Ngaben is uh, you do something that that people and you uh, and you do a grave like uh, your family or your. Uh, or any other people that uh, that was dead, you can grave them with Ngaben in Bali. And the second is Bali also has beautiful and famous beaches around the world, such as Kuta Beach, Sanur, and Nusa Dua. You know Tom Holland cast as Spider Man uh, Spider Man movie. Uh, he is ever came to Bali. Uh, and there is a lot of uh, famous people in the world that uh, ever visit to Bali. And this is uh, the interesting of Bali is Kecak Dance. Kecak Dance is traditional dance from Bali. Uh, and then you can uh, look at this picture. It's uh, some example of uh, Kecak Dance is, is it? And besides that, Bali has also unique arts and culture, such as that barong dance, kecak dance like this, and religious ceremonies such as asnyepi and galungan. And I would say before, it's called ngaben. And then, this is the uh, picture of Bali. There is a beach, there is a temple, there is a villa, there is a, any other place that's interesting when you come to Bali. Okay, uh, the second is Jakarta. The capital city of Indonesia. Uh, actually, Jakarta is the most uh, important uh, place in Indonesia because uh, Jakarta is the capital city. Uh, now what? Jakarta is the capital city of Indonesia, which 
is located on the island of Java, specifically in the west of Java. As the center of government and business, Jakarta has many office buildings, shopping centers, and entertainment centers. Uh, you can look this picture. Uh, the first picture is uh, called Monas. Monas is uh, the one of creature that iconic from Jakarta. And the second is Jakarta also has many interesting tourist attractions, such as the beautiful Indonesia Miniature Park, National Monument, and the Old City. Old City, people in Indonesian people call it with Kota Lama. Kota Lama is uh, mean Old City. Old City, why, uh, why it's called Old City? Because uh, there is uh, like, uh, what? Uh, I, because uh, there is uh, something like historical heritage from Netherlands when Netherlands come to Indonesia. And then this is a Jakarta picture. Uh, there is a Monas, there is a metropolitan city, there is the old city, there is a welcome sign and a vacation place like Jakarta Birdland and any other place that interesting from Jakarta. The last one is Yogyakarta. Yogyakarta is the cultural heart of Java. Yogyakarta is also uh, people Indonesia Indonesian people call Yogyakarta with Jogja. It's a city located on the island of Java. Specifically, is the middle of Java and considered the culture heart of Java because there is uh, many many culture in Yogyakarta. And then uh, Yogyakarta is uh, have a various uh, people that come to Yogyakarta. Yogyakarta is also famous for its historical heritage, such as such as uh, the Borobudur Temple, Prambanan Temple, and Taman Sari. Uh, Borobudur Temple is a uh, most iconic place in Yogyakarta because uh, some people that visit to Borobur Temple will actually take a picture with some uh, god creature like uh, yeah you can also explore by yourself what uh, what is in it in Borobur Temple and then this is uh, the picture of Yogyakarta uh, this is the first uh, is sign of Yogyakarta and then Prambanan Temple the photogenic and instagramable place to you take a picture and then uh, what is it uh, Boroboro Temple, Malioboro Street and any other place that you can uh, explore from Yogyakarta and this is my presentation for you thank you uh, and yeah just like that Yeah, thank you, Mr. Joseph Lim, for um, sharing the interesting places in Indonesia. So mm, right now, um, let's move on with our next presenter from Best State Technical University, Belarus, um, Kivaka Alexi. Kivaka Alexi from Bested Technical University. Uh, me? Uh, yeah, you can share your uh, presentation. Mm, sorry, one second. Yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, I ask.
Everything okay, Mr. Kivaka Alexi? Oh, uh, next speaker, Miss Aisha, maybe. Oh, okay. Okay, so since um, Kivaka Alexi is experiencing some technical issues, so um, let's move on to uh, participant from Kiviri State Ped Pedagogical University from Ukraine, um, Hana Sharetnik. Yes. Yeah. Hello, thank you. thank you so much. Okay, so let me demonstrate my screen. Okay, let me know if you can see my presentation. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. So hello everyone. Um, today I'd like to present you my country, uh, where I was born, grew up and where I live in. So it's famous for its splendid beauty and hidden gems. And I'll disclose to you today. My country is Ukraine, as you can see. So did you hear about it before? I think you actually did. Most people heard about Ukraine from different games about Chernobyl. Some, like sport fans, may have heard of um, boxers, Klitschko brothers, Alexander Ursik, football player Andriy Shevchenko and others. Um, however, approximately a year ago, everyone heard about Ukraine from TV news channels all around the globe. So you may see these images and you may estimate the scope of destructions. Nevertheless, today I promise to show you Ukraine from the different side and we will immerse into its beauty. Okay, so just take a look at this slide. This is not Maldives, this is Ukrainian Jarilgach Island. Jarilgach is the longest and the largest island in Ukraine. The origin story behind this island is very romanticized. Iphigenia, from Greek mythology, didn't want to marry Achilles. So she ran to the sea to plunge into the waves forever. Luckily for her, the goddess Artemis wanted to save the girl and she began pouring sand in front of her. Thus, the Jarlgach island appeared. This island was also mentioned in the works of ancient historians Pliny, Herodotus, and Ptolemy. And now the popular tourist destination is Kamenets Podilsky Fortress. It was located on a strategic transport crossroad, which made the castle a prime target for foreign invaders back in the 14th century. They rebuilt the castle several times, but in spite of many architectural and engineering changes, this fortress has been a part of unique medieval legacy. Now the fortress belongs to the seven wonders of Ukraine and is the candidate for UNESCO World Heritage Site. What is more, this destination spot is famous for its annual balloon festivals. Just imagine yourself gliding on the balloon through the medieval atmosphere with its towers, fortification walls, and bridges. The annual gliding has been held here since 1998, and every time it becomes even more enchanting and interesting. The next is Ascania Nova. It's another unforgettable place to visit. It is the oldest and the largest biosphere reserve in Europe. Today, it's a real outdoor museum. There are over 500 species of plants, many of which are endangered. There are uh, 450 species of exotic animals, birds, such as black swans, cranes, bisons, step eagles, and others. Some of them remain only here on the territory of Ascania Nova Biosphere Reserve and no longer exist in wildlife. Okay. So the next one is the Cinever National Nature Park. It consists of numerous appealing places for tourism. Among them, this beautiful waterfall that you can see to your left. Uh, it is 40 meters high and consists of several cascades. And more than 10,000 tourists come here every year. It is truly magnificent. Um, you're probably wondering, what is this bear doing here? So this kid brown bear lives here in Senever Reserve Rehabilitation Center for Bears. Considering the fact that these animals are on the verge of extinction in Ukraine, specially equipped territory was built for them, and the owners assure that this center will soon become one of the largest in Europe. And if you'd like, you of course can visit these bears while you're here on the territory. Another popular destination spot is the Cinever Lake. Uh, well, uh, it is uh, famous because it's a valuable natural treasure and a hallmark of the Carpathian Mountains. The uniqueness in its water because it never overflows its banks. And nowadays this lake attracts many couples because there is a belief that those who are here are going to love one another forever and have strong relationship. 
Okay, our next site is located in the city of Chernivtsi. Uh, it was the premises, um, the former residence now served as National University of Chernivtsi. When it was built in the 19th century, uh, the requirements to workers were very high. They couldn't break, uh, they couldn't build, um, they, could, they had to check every brick for its dimensions and they couldn't build more than 100 bricks per day. Can you imagine that? And the complex uh, show architectural and cultural influences from the Byzantine period, and it demonstrates Austro-Hungarian legacy on the territory of Ukraine. Now it's a part of UNESCO World Heritage List. Uh, Kimber Spit is our next tourist destination. The first we mentioned was um, a dating uh, from the fifth century BC. Uh, that was the state of Gilia that existed on its territory. And the famous trade road from the Varegians to the Greeks was here. It is connected to Baltic and Byzantium in the 10th century. In the 15th century, there was um, a fortress built, but unfortunately it hasn't survived. Uh, and the interesting fact that this place is now called an open air pharmacy, more than 500 different types of plants grow here. And many of them have healing properties. So you can see, for example, valerian, chamomile, mint, thyme, and others. Another tourist destination here is salt lakes. Some of them are pink, so you may see in the picture, and they can be spotted even from the satellite. Organic pink pigment is produced by the algae that live in the water, so that special plant. Our next destination is Ustan Fortress. It is located in the western part. Um, so um, on the right picture, you can actually see how it looked back in the days. According to researchers, uh, this complex was built just on the rocks as a defense and a custom point. It was made of wood, and um, there was the salt road ran through Tustan that transported salt from our country further to Europe. Today, Tustan is popular because of the annual festival. During this festival, the life of ancient cities were created just as it was 10 centuries ago. So you can see everything like different crafts, dancing, authenticism, and night tournaments. Next destination is Beruchi Island. It is located in the western part of the Sea of Azov. There is a national uh, nature park here. You may also spot the Beruchi Lighthouse. According to the numerous researchers, many scientists believe that the royal Scythians lived on this territory and ancient relics that were recently di discovered through this act. So you can see some of them to the right. Uh, mountain landscape cannot be only seen in the Kirpassens. There are also unique mountain ranges in the south part of our country. So those are called Kherson Mountain or Kherson Grand Canyon, just as we know about American Grand Canyon in comparison. If you climb to the top, you can see a wonderful view panorama. Therefore, people often come here to take pictures and simply meditate and enjoy the nature. Uh, by the way, there is a legend that Bogdan Khmelnytsky, our famous Ukrainian military commander, often came here to restore his energy. So it was his power place, uh, place of power for him. And the last but not least, our capital city, of course, Kyiv. Um, the first site I'd like to show you is Golden Gate. So this is the historical center of ancient Kyiv. It is the oldest Christian church that is fully preserved. The cathedral has been seen high in those days of Vladimir the Great and Yaroslav the Wise. And there is, um, okay, and um, uh, after, after the 1240, the gate was partially destroyed. And after that, it slowly fell into ruins. However, it was reconstructed multiple times and had become a symbol of Ukrainian unbreakable spirit. Um, next side is Cathedral of St. Sophia. It is located in the historical center of Kyiv. It is the oldest church on our territory. And there is an old saying, as long as the unbreakable wall stands in Sofia, so will Kyiv. And our last destination is the Motherland Monument. The sculpture is a part of the National Museum of History of Ukraine. And the monument is considered to be the tallest sculpture in Europe. Its total height is 102 meters. So you can imagine how tall it is. So honestly, there are much more astonishing sites in Kyiv and in Ukraine. The Independence Square, Skrushatik, the main street of Kyiv, House of Chimeras, where the office of president of Ukraine is located, Ark of Freedom, and so forth. So I encourage you just to come to Ukraine and see this beauty with your own eyes when the war um, is over. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you so much for Ms. Hanna. And then we will go to the third speaker. This is from 
Brace the Technical University from Kifaka Alexi. Yeah, for Mr. Kifaka, are you ready? Okay. And the next speaker, this is from University of Venda, South Africa. Miss Tendai Mutambu and Gibson Mikioni. Yeah, for Da and Gibson, the time is yours. Thank you. from Student University of Vendas, South Africa. Um, good morning. Yes. Good morning, Novita. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine too. Um, I think from our side, uh, instead of that, uh, they're presenting at two o'clock. Um, yeah, so currently now they are engaged in their uh, academics right now but um they're going to be joining us after 11 um because on their schedule it was noted that they'll be presenting it too so is it possible for them to be to present it too from your end okay is it okay we are waiting and the next speaker this is from Mikolai State agrarian university from ukraine Miss Karina Hetman Sefa. Yeah, for Miss Karina. Are you available in the Zoom? Okay. Yeah, maybe from Pakistan, University of Faisalabad, Pakistan. You will first or no? Assalamualaikum. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear your voice. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much for having me. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, can you see the screen? Yes. Okay, so my name is Uniba Amjad and I'm a student of the University of Islamabad, currently doing my BS program in nutrition and dietetics. And today I'm going to tell you why you must visit my beautiful country and what destinations you would like to visit when you plan your next year in Pakistan. So uh, Pakistan is a country with a rich cultural heritage and stunning natural beauty, uh, making it a destination worth visiting for tourists. As you can see, it's a beautiful country with rich cultural heritage and um, diverse culture, which offers a variety of tourist destinations ranging, for, ranging from scenic natural landscapes to historic landmarks and cultural sites. One of the two reasons why you must visit my country is its rich cultural heritage. Um, its unique customs and traditions. Its cultural heritage is not just for Pakistanis, but exploring Pakistan's cultural heritage can be a rewarding and enriching experience. It allows one to appreciate its history, diversity, and connection to the past. Uh, other than this, the people of Pakistan are so friendly. You would so like to meet them. Uh, they are always welcoming their uh, visitors with open arms, and uh, uh, the locals are always eager to show off their culture and share their stories. Of to make friends and learn about the country's uh, culture and history. So since we're short on time, I would uh, move directly on to the uh, my tourist spots that are present in my country. Starting off with the ancient cities. Uh, uh, Pakistan is home to so many ancient cities, including Mohanjadaro, Harappa, Texala. Uh, and it's, you so need to visit these places as these cities are a must visit for any tourist who wants to explore the country's history and culture. Uh, these ancient cities of Pakistan offer visitors a fascinating glimpse into the country's rich cultural heritage and a must be destination for anyone interested in art, history, and literature. So these are some of the pictures of the places like Texala, Mohanjadaro, and Harappa that uh, show the ruins and the cultural heritage and the uh, history of my beloved country, Pakistan. 
Um, so moving on to the mountainous regions, uh, Pakistan has some of the world's most spectacular mountainous regions with towering peaks, deep valleys, and breathtaking uh, sceneries. As you can see, uh, there there is a lake, Sefal Mulu, and Atabad Lake. These crystal clear lakes are surrounded by towering peaks and provide a serene and tranquil environment. And you'll surely be fashion when you visit my country, obviously. And you know what's the most fascinating thing about my country? The world's second largest peak, K2, is present in my country, which is second only to Mount Everest. And uh, it is considered to be one of the most challenging uh, peaks in the world to climb. And despite its uh, challenges, K2 continues to draw mountaineers and adventure enthusiasts from all over the world towards itself. So if you are into adventure and climbing, visiting K2 is a must for sure for you. And it is a lifetime experience. The challenge, beauty, history, and adventure of climbing this magnificent mountain make it an unforgettable experience for those who are up to the task. And there are, you know, different type of activities for you uh, people who are interest, interested in mountaineering, skiing, and snowboarding, rock climbing, wildlife, and bird watching. You need to visit the mountainous regions present here. Okay, so moving on to the coastal areas of Pakistan. Pakistan is home to st stunning coastal areas, including the Arabian Sea, the Indus River Delta. These areas offer a chance to explore the country's rich marine life and enjoy beautiful places. These um, uh, these areas include the some beaches in the Karachi, which are shown in the picture, and um, the Estola Island, which is located in Balochistan. Whenever you want to relax on the beach, explore the marine life, uh, or discover the local culture and cuisine, the coastal areas of Pakistan are a sure visit for you. So you are always welcome. Uh, next, we have the deserts of Pakistan. Pakistan is also home to some of the world's most spectacular deserts, including the Third Desert and the Cholistan Desert. Uh, this is the third desert, which is shown in the picture, and it is uh, uh, one of the Pakistan's most biggest des deserts. And um, these regions of Pakistan offer a range of adventure activities, uh, including such as jeep safaris, camel rides, and desert camping. These activities allow visitors to explore the vast expanse of the desert and experience the local culture up close. So if, if you are interested in exploring the desert on a jeep safari uh, or uh, or in exploring the deserts, you need to visit Pakistan and explore these places. And the last but not the least, obviously, the valleys of Pakistan. These are the main beauty of Pakistan. And the valleys of Pakistan are known for their stunning natural beauty with lush greenery, snow-capped peaks and crystal clear rivers. Pakistan is some of the world's most spectacular valleys, including the Sawat Valley, Kagan Valley, Kalash Valley. And the valley shown here is the Sawat Valley, which is one of the Pakistan's most beautiful valleys. And it is so peaceful and so beautiful that you so need to visit it whenever you plan to relax or freshen up your mind or to take a break from, you know, your exhausting routine, daily life routine. So uh, these ways offer also offer visitors some unique and unforgettable experience with their stunning natural beauty, adventure activities, rich culture and wildlife and historical sites. Uh, so, you know, Pakistan is a country full of unique and beautiful destinations that are sure to provide an unforgettable experience, whether it's exploring ancient street cities, trekking through the mountains, or enjoying the stunning views of the valleys, Pakistan has something for you. So pack your bags and get ready for an unforgettable journey. No matter where you go, you are sure to be uh, captivated by the beauty and culture of Pakistan. People of Pakistan surely welcome you to their country. From the stunning beaches to the majestic mountains, this country is sure to provide a memorable experience. Uh, before ending, I would like to show you a short video to give you a beautiful a glimpse of my country. Uh, let me show if you can uh, see my screen. Um, Can you see the video? Currently, no. Uh, can you now see the video? No, we only see the presentation. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, I guess there's some sort of technical issues. Um. Uh, can you now see the video? Yes. Okay, thank you.
For Miss Uneba, yeah, your video not, your son is not available. Um, sorry? Son of video not available. We cannot hear. I guess there is some sort of technical issue and I'm so sorry for that. It's okay, it's okay. You can continue. Thank you. Okay, so I hope you like my beautiful country, Pakistan. And this was, this was an end. And I would like to, I would like you all to must visit my country and have a beautiful lens of hair. So thank you so much, that's it for today. Okay, thank you, Miss Uniba Amjad, for sharing your interesting, the interesting places in Pakistan. Yeah, thank you. And then we'll move on with um, our next presenter from Best State Technical University, um, Kivaka Alexi, to present um, the country Belarus. Mr. Kivaka Alexi? Yes, call. Um, yeah, you may proceed with your presentation. Thank you. Uh, greetings to everyone who is listening. In the following few minutes, I'm going to be telling you about various tourist attractions in my country. The history of Belarus was eventful, which led to a vast amount of places of interest. I am, of course, unable to cover everything in such a short period of time, so feel free to visit our country and see some of the places I will mention here and so much more. Chapter 1. Churches. Uh, the first church I'm going to tell you about is a Church of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Uh, it is uh, made in neo-Gothic style uh, in 19th century. Uh, a Polish nobleman, Ignaty Lopatinsky, lost his wife and decided to preserve the memory of her by building a church in her name, uh, which would represent the beauty of that woman and show the depth of his feelings. Uh, uh, that's another picture of this church. Uh, next church is uh, Cathedral Church of St. Francis Xavier. Uh, it was built in 17th century. And uh, this church is 50 meters high. Uh, the wooden altar looks as if it's made out of marble. It is decorated with 20 sculptures of apostles. Uh, one of the towers has an old clock. Uh, and its age exceeds even a famous clock tower in Prague. Hi, sorry, Mr. Alexey, but um, your presentation is not moving. One 
Gustavo. Um, can you see a uh, current slide? Yeah. Uh, for, uh, did you, do you see uh, slides change on our presentation? For now, it's still on the Triangular Trinity Church. Um, do you see next slide? Have you changed the slide? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we, it doesn't change. Um, and now? Um, not, not really. It's still the same slide. Um, what does it say, this slide? Triangular 3D Church. Um, no changes at all? Yeah. Um, Maybe you could uh, choose the option of sharing your screen instead of sharing this page. Um, Maybe like, is it like this for everyone? Can somebody else uh, tell us if it doesn't change? Miss Novita. Okay, let's try like this. Yeah, it's changing now. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, that machine sounds each Okay, thank you. We'll start from where we left off. Uh, so, the next church is Franciscan uh, Church of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Uh, this church has seven altars and an old organ. Uh, that consists of almost 1,500 metal and wooden pipes. A special place in the church is held by Alfred Roma's painting, uh, Pinsk Madonna, painted in 1984. In 1996, Pope John Paul II gave this church uh, a status of a saint of minor bas basilica, which means that this church has special uh, privileges. Uh, the next church is uh, Triangular Trinity Church, uh, one of the most common versions of the origin of such an unusual shape of this church suggests that it was meant for visitors of three different religions and at once. Uniates, Orthodox and Catholics could use separate entrances and the altar was set in the middle. Uh, Next church is St. Nicholas Fraternal Church. Uh, the St. Nicholas Church was funded by donations uh, from participants of Russian-Japanese war. Uh, the church had a shelter for homeless children, a parish school, and a canteen for the poor. In 1961, the church was closed and reopened in 1990. Uh, Chapter second, uh, palaces and manners. Uh, the first palace is uh, uh, the palace of the Romances and Pashkeviches. Uh, it's uh, made in uh, classicism style uh, and it was built in 18th century. Uh, Romances and Pashkeviches were noblemen families in the Russian empire. Uh, the palace and uh, the park complex is huge. It includes the Cathedral of St. Peter and Paul, the chapel tomb of the Paskeviches, the Winter Garden, and an observation tower. Uh, also, the Swan Pond and uh, the embankment along the Soz River. Uh, today, interme international meetings and negotiations are held here. Uh, 
uh, Palace of Potemkin. Uh, Grigory Potemkin, a Russian nobleman, ordered to build a palace uh, that would uh, resemble a monogram, uh, Russian letters P and E. Later, he sold the palace to the Galinsky family. There are legends of a ghost inhabiting this palace, who is called the Lady in White, and is believed to be the wife of Jan Galinsky. Uh, nowadays, a registry office and a museum of local law are situated in this palace. Uh, next uh, is Palace of Aginsky. Uh, 200 years ago, uh, cultural and social life were prospering in this region. Because of that, the place uh, was nicknamed Northern Athens. A politician and a composer, Mikhail Aginsky, created an England styled uh, landscape park and a stone palace. Today, in this park complex, you can listen to the immortal Palanese, a composition by Oginsky, and take part in a theatrical tour. Uh, next is the Palace of the Puslovskis. Uh, this palace belonged, belonged to the Puslovskis nobleman family. The architecture of this palace is creative. Uh, the 12 towers of the palace symbolize months of the year. One of the legends says that there was a lion that walked through the corridors of the palace at night so that the servants would not have a desire to steal anything. Nowadays, restoration of the palace is in progress, but some of the rooms are already open to public. Uh, next is Mena Nemtsevich. Uh, this estate was founded by Marcellius Nemtsevich. Uh, the interiors contained a ballroom, a stucco, and huge mirrors on the walls. You can take a walk among the centuries old trees in a grotesque park nearby. Nowadays, uh, this manor is a museum. Uh, the third uh, chapter is uh, UNESCO World Heritage. Uh, the first is uh, Struve Geodetic Arc. Uh, in the middle of 19th century, 265 towers were placed on the territory of 10 countries in order to calculate the size and shape of our planet using triangulation. It helped to establish that our planet is not spherical, but flattened at the poles. Uh, one of the triangulation towers is on the territory of Belarus. Uh, next is the uh, Church of St. Michael the Arch Archangel. Uh, in the 15th century, uh, Vitovt, a Lithuanian ruler, uh, was uh, hiding from his cousin Yagaila uh, in the local forests due to a struggle for power. Uh, when Yagaila admitted defeat and Vitovt uh, received the title of prince, uh, in gratitude to God, he decided to build a church fortress in the forests. Next is the Augusta Canal. Uh, the length of this uh, canal is 102 kilo kilometers, and only 10, 22 of them are in Belarus. Uh, the canal connected uh, the channels of the Vistula and Neman rivers and was uh, intended for moving provision, but the canal wasn't used for long. Uh, thanks to the beautiful landscapes, it has become a popular tourist place. Uh, next is uh, Belarusska Pushcha. Uh, Pushcha is a Belarusian word for a dense forest. The, ter the territory of the national park is 150,000 hectares. 90% uh, of this area is a wild forest where human presence is not allowed. Uh, it is a home to 900 species of plants, 230 species of birds, and more than 100 species of other animals. Many of the inhabitants of the Pushcha are endangered. For example, it is the only natural habitat of the European bison. Uh, thank you for your attention and welcome to Belarus.
Okay, thank you for your presentation. And the next, we will go to the, the next speaker from Oromia State University from mm -hmm. Ethiopia, Mr. Abraham Teklewold. For Mr. Abraham from Oromia State University, the time is yours. Thank you. Не прислали нам Даже на почту. На почту. Хорошо. А здесь еще посмотрите. Hello, hello. Okay, greeting, dear brothers and sisters, particularly Stakeholm University community. I would like to forward my precious greeting on behalf of Oromia State University. Thank you for organizing such wonderful program. Today, I am Abraham. I will present tourism destination of Ethiopia. When everybody come to Ethiopia, especially when they visit in Oromia region, I would like to introduce them. Must visit these historical places. Uh, when we start, when we begin our presentation. Uh, there is a Recha festival, which is a thanksgiving to God, which is we call Waka. And uh, we do have intangible heritage. It is intangible heritage. And uh, second, there is the power of God at transforming the ceremony, which is the organic place of a real democracy. And uh, we will see, uh, we do have a lot of natural resources like a forest area and uh, some waterfalls and uh, lakes and a rift valley, especially we are in a rift valley area. We do have a lot of uh, Icelanders and uh, some bird Icelands and uh, monasteries. Uh, next, we do have Sofumar Cave which is a wonderful place to visit. And uh, we do have some national parks, which is, as you can see in my picture, a red fox, which is located in Bali Mountains National Park. And uh, if you guys allow me, I would love to show you some videos, which is more describe our resources. As you can see in my video, this is a sophomore cave. I think you are looking at. Hmm? This is a cave of Sofumar, which is located in Bali. And uh, this is Saka waterfall, which is located in Jimma area, north, northern area of Ethiopia, which is a, which have a wonderful view. And uh, this uh, second Yayu forest, 
which is a coffee forest. You know, again, it's located in uh, Jimma area, the northern part of Oromia. This is Ali Darar Mountain. Ethiopia is a gifted country, especially Oromia is a place of all things you can see. As you can see, this mountain is located again in Jima area. Now we are seeing the Borana National Park, which is, uh, there are a lot of animals. As you can see, there are a lot of zebras in the National Park. It is um, Borana National Park. As you can see, there are a lot of animals. Now we are seeing, now we are in Tre Shekana Hussein, which is located in Bali. This is the indigenous heritage. We do have a lot of indigenous heritage. This is the one. Okay, thank you everyone. This is my presentation for today. And I would like to say, welcome to the land of diverse beauty, Oromia. And uh, I would like to thank you everyone. Thank you, Mr. Amohaba, uh, for sharing um, the interesting places in Ethiopia. Um, now uh, we are moving on to the next presenter from Mikolayi. State Agrarian University, Ukraine, Ms. Karina Hetmanseva. Is Ms. Karina here? Okay, so I think we can um, move on to another presenter from University Putra, Malaysia. Representing Malaysia, Mr. Ki Jo Yu. Yes. Uh, yeah. Good uh, afternoon. Can, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um.
Uh, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I would like to know if you can see my screen clearly. Yes, we can. Yes, okay. Uh, so good afternoon, everyone over here. So today I'm going to present the tourism destination that must be visited during trip in Malaysia. So I would like to uh, introduce myself. I'm Kijo Yu um, from University Putra, Malaysia. So I'm one of their students. So for introduction, for your information, uh, Malaysia is a unique country that is home to many different cultures and ethnicities. So with a population of over 32 million people, Malaysia is a melting pot of diverse races and religions, which have given rise to a rich and vibrant cultural landscape. So Malaysia is home to three main ethnic groups. So it can be classified into Malays, Chinese, Indians, as well as a smaller percentage of uh, indigenous people, each of these groups have its own unique culture, traditions, and costumes. So uh, here are the places I would like to introduce to you. Uh, these are the places that I can, that you can found in one of our states, which is in Selangor or Kuala Lumpur. So the first destination I would like to introduce is the Pratana, the Pratana Botanica Garden, the Central Market, the Tatara Merdeka, the K. Albert Park, Bataling Street and also the KL Forest Eco, uh, Eco Park. So, so for the first uh, destination, so the Perdana Botanical Garden, it has can be classified into two main gardens, the Orchid Garden and the Hibiscus, uh, Hibiscus Garden. So it has features over 800 species of orchids, so including the rare and endangered species. So I believe it will be very interesting as um, these rare and endangered species, they are not common, commonly found. So you also can stroll through the garden's winding paths and admire the vibrant colors and unique shapes of the flower. So I will just um, go through with this Perdana Botanical Garden. And I'd like to go to the next destination, which is the Central Market. So as you can see, this central market is, is built in year of 1888. So it is a center for Malaysian culture, art and craft located in the heart of the city. So it's also a building with significant, uh, significant historical value. So it is a must visit destination, offering visitors a unique shopping opportunity where they can release their uh, release from local handicrafts, textiles, uh, souvenirs, collectibles, and local snacks. So. If you wish to get more information for these interesting places, I've already inserted the link over here. So you can just, um, or you can just simply go to the search bar in Google. You can just type the central market and it will give you a lot of information on this. So I will just give a brief content on these interesting places. So let's move on to the next uh, destination, which is the Tatara Merdeka. So the Tatara Merdeka is one of the best known landmarks in Malaysia. So it seems to be nothing more than a giant field with perfectly man, uh, uh, manicure green lawns and a centerpiece of, a, of the tallest flagpole in the world, which is 95 meters, proudly displaying the Jalo Gemilang, which is the Malaysian flag. So this is the historical place where the Union flag was lowered and the Malayan flag was raised for the very first time at the stroke of midnight of 31st August of uh, 1957. So from then on, the Merdeka Square has been the venue for the annual Merdeka Parade. So for KL Bird Park, so if you, um, if you notice, these three I mean, most of the interesting places I put over here usually related to the nature, um, with the natural. So if you are nature lovers, I believe that um, you will be very interested in these destinations. So for the K. Albert Park, so it is a home to more than 3,000 local and foreign birds of approximately 200 different species. So the main feature that distinguishes the K. Albert Park from any other bird parks is the concept of free flight. So what is meant by the concept of free flight? So one of the most prominent evidence that these birds have adapted so well to this environment is that they are able to breed naturally. So the best way to ensure the survival and species continuity of these birds 
So I believe that visitors will have an exciting experience of watching colorful and melodic birds uh, preaching and winding uh, about freely while relaxing in the natural and beautifully landscape surround. So, so uh, these are four of the six interesting places in one of our states, Selangor. So next, I would also like to introduce the Petronas Twin Tower, Kuala Lumpur. So uh, for your information, so this Petronas Twin Tower are each 432 meter tall and have 88 floors. It's known to be an iconic landmark for tourists, including Malaysians visiting Kuala Lumpur. So the Petronas Twin Tower held the title of the world's tallest building from 1998 to 2004. It still holds the record for the tallest twin towers in the world. So overlooking the beautiful KLCC Park. So the KLCC word uh, refers to the Kuala Lumpur City Centre. Kuala Lumpur City Centre, um, which located right in front of the towers at a height of 360 meter high you will be able to get a magnificent view of the city center. So there are actually there are four different places at the Twin Towers to drop by. Um, for information, one of, the, uh, one of the places is named as the Sky Bridge, which is located at 41st floor and a digital displays, which is located at 83rd floor and an observation deck is located at 86th floor. And also the Petronas Twin Towers gift shop at the concourse level. So you could also join a 45 minute guided tour. So other than that, uh, instead of view the entire city of Kuala Lumpur, you may also interested in some of the places in the Petronas Twin Tower, such as the Aquaria KLCC, the Petro Science, the Discovery Center, the Petro Science Art Gallery, the Petronas Philharmonic Hall, and you may also witness the light spectacle at the Lake Symphony. So in short, the Aquaria KLCC actually includes uh, some of the sea creatures, some of the sea creatures in it. Basically, it's just an aquarium. Okay, so if you're in love with the marine life, so I believe you'll be um, very interested. This place would be very interesting to you. And also for petrol science, it is... Um, mostly related to the science and also the technology. So for those people, you are very into the science and technology thing. So I believe this gonna this gonna be the must visit place for you. And for those art lover, you, okay, you can also join this Petronas Art Gallery so that it could a lot of epic drawings and also some of the uh, stuff. Very interesting uh, creatures. I mean, some uh, some of the art, art drawings over there. And if you are a music lover, so you can also buy a ticket at the Petronas Philharmonic Hall. So for your information, this Petrona, Petronas Philharmonic Hall, so it's home to the Malaysian Philharmonic Orchestra, which can be abbreviated as MPO, which is made up of some of the best musicians in the world. So uh, the MPO performs a wide, range, a wide range of music from classical to contemporary and has won art acoustics technology. Uh, sorry, uh, it also won numerous awards for its performance. So also you might interested in the, like uh, the spectacular light and water show that takes place in the Symphony Lake in KLCC Park. So these are the pictures shown over here. So other than the interesting place from Kuala Lumpur, I would like to introduce, oh, sorry. I think that's at the, yeah. So I would like to introduce four more places, more places for the nature lovers. So such as the Forest Research Institute Malaysia, the Frim at Kuala Lumpur, the Batu Caves Selangor at the Mount Kinabalu at Sabah and Sampurna Sabah. So the Kuala Lumpur, it is a part of the Malaysia and Selangor as well is one of the state of Malaysia and Sabah is one of the state of Malaysia. So these are the photos I will be showing over here. This, um, the Batu Caves Selangor the Forest Research Institute Malaysia, FRIM, 
the Samprona Saba and also the Mount Kinabalu Saba. So there are more places in Malaysia. I mean, I just take out some of the examples that might make you interested in. I mean, these places are amazing. So hope to see you in the future and welcome to Malaysia. Thank you. Thank you for Mr. Ki Joyo. And the next speaker, we will go to the Mr. Danilo Mazanko from Dimitro Motoni Tafria State Agrotechnological University from Ukraine. Yeah, for Mr. Danilo, the time is yours. Thank you. We can hear you. Can you turn on your microphone, please? Can you? We can't hear you. Can you? Once more, let's try. Okay, how about now? Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, okay. Okay, did you hear what I said before? No, no. no. Repeat, please. Okay, I said that my name is Daniel and uh, I have prepared a short presentation on popular places in Ukraine that you should visit after the war ends. And if you can show us next slide, please. Uh, first, it's uh, Zaporizhian siege because uh, I was born and raised in the Zaporizhia region and I visited this place. It is really beautiful and it was established in 1552, and the term Zaporizhian siege can also refer to the whole military administrative organization of the Zaporizhian Cossack host. Uh, many men came there because of the freedom and democracy that that place offered, because those men, they served in the Polish uh, military, but then Poland started to take away their rights, and those men they decided to create their own country, I would say, just to, to give you a clear picture of what this place is. Uh, next slide, please. Kiev Petersk Lavra, which is uh, in Kiev, the capital of Ukraine, also known as the Kiev Monastery of the Caves, and it is a historic uh, Eastern Orthodox Christian monastery, which gave its name to one of the city's districts where this uh, uh, Lavra is located. And uh, sits its uh, foundation as the cave monastery in 1051, the Lavra has been a prominent center of Eastern Orthodox Christianity in Eastern Europe. Next slide, please. A Medzebich Fortress was built in Khmelnytska Oblast or Khmelnytska region, and it was a bulwark against Ottoman expansion back in the 1540s and became one of the strongest fortresses of the crown of the Kingdom of Poland because uh, a big part of Ukraine used to be under Poland, so that's why. But today it is just a castle, uh, like it's a, just a place for tourists and uh, 
It is a part of the state historical and cultural preserve in Ukraine. Next slide, please. The Tunnel of Love. Uh, it is a section of industrial railway located in uh, in Rivne region near Cleveland. It is a railway surrounded by green arches and it is uh, three to five kilometers in length. It is, it is also known for being a favorite place for couples to take walks and take beautiful and romantic photos. Uh, and you can walk there. And according to my information, the trains pass there three times a day. So you should be very careful about that and uh, so that you don't hurt yourself. Askania Nova is a state biosphere reserve founded back in 1898 by Friedrich Polsfein in the Kherson region. Askania Nova is unique not only for Ukraine, but also for the whole world. And it is the largest uh, steep reserve in Europe, which is visited by over 140,000 tourists every year. And there is a large botanical garden with an area of 170 hectares. There is also a big zoological park and the reserve has about 800 varieties of wild ungloids and hybrid forms of pigs, deer, Pshewalski's horses, bisons, antelopes, camels, bulls, Scottish ponies, and many, many other animals. I was there probably back in 2018, and I was really surprised by how many animals there were and by how green that place was. There were a lot of old trees and uh, other very cool uh, spots for photos. And uh, yeah, I highly recommend you to visit this place. And next slide, it is a lake, uh, the Lake Sinivir, which is in the Carpathia region. And it is the largest lake in uh, Ukraine. And uh, it is not far from the village of Sinivir Polana. And uh, it is uh, part of the National Natural Preserve Sinivir, which was established in 1989. And in 2008, the lake was recognized as one of the seven natural wonders of Ukraine. And as you can see on the photos, no matter what season it is, whether it is spring, winter, autumn, this place looks amazing. And uh, in the future, I really want to visit this place because it is wonderful. Uh, that's it. Thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Daniel, for the presentation. So now we are moving on to another presenter from Ukraine. Uh, from Mikolaev State Agrarian University, Ms. Karina Hetmanseva. Yeah, hi. Yeah, hi. Uh, so you may start your presentation. Thank you. Sorry, I can't. Um... Sorry? I cannot um, take my video, live video in stream. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. I think... Um... I need to take a uh, translation my presentation, yeah? Yeah. One moment, please.
Miss Aisha mungkin bisa. Oh, udah join. Have you seen my? Yeah, we can see your screen. Okay. Open today, Ukraine. Ukraine is one of Europe's last genuine travel frontiers, a nation rich in colorful traditions, warm hearted people, and awesome map experience. Built of wood in stands to 13th centuries and redesigned and rebuilt in stone by Italian military engineers in the 16th century, communist Podilsky fortress is a mishmash of styles. But the overall impression is break. And taking and the view from the Turkish bridge leading to the fortress would certainly make a short list of Ukrainians' most iconic front page vistas. The fortress is filled with museums and cafes, and in the summer concerts frequently take place in its first courtyard. Ekremar Fortness. Ekremar Fortness is located in the city of Bilhodonistrovsky in Odessa region. It was one of the largest and most powerful fortified cities in the Northwest Black Sea region in 13th 15th centuries. The fortress is surrounded by 15 meters deep moat. The shape of buildings resembles an original polygon. The fortress was built on the remains of the Greek cities of Tyrus founded 2,500 years ago. The fortress is one of the most popular tourist cities in southern Ukraine. It is a popular destination for staged performances and music festivals. The fortress is a good shooting set for different movies. Next is Mejibis. Castle. Mejibis Castle is a monument of uh, fortification architecture of the 16th century. The name comes from the location near the confluence of the South Bog and Bujok rivers. The styles of the attraction is mixed from the masonry construction of the Lithuanian era to the East European resonance and pseudo-Gothic on the 19th century. Oleski Castle. Oleski Castle has the powerful energy of its stern and impregnable figure standing on a hill among a drive swamps makes you lose your breeze. It is an architectural monument of uh, a steam of six. 17th century. Here, old paintings, figurines, and uh, household items are collected, which to a certain extent reproduce the authentic interiors of the castle, which enhances the effect of emergence uh, in the atmosphere of antiquity. Basalt counts. The place called Yanova Valley attracts tourists with the greatness of uh, basalt calms and the fabulous beauty of the emerald lake uh, formed after the flooding of the quarry. Scientists uh, claim that uh, it cannot be anywhere else on the earth. The height of the basalt pillars in this place varies uh, from 1 to 30 meters. The processing of the stone has been going on for over a hundred years and natural reservoirs don't uh, run out. Tunnel of Love, my favorite, one of the most popular and amazing places in the toilet uh, Tunnel of Love, the five kilometer green corridor created by trees lined up in uh, an arch of uh, perfect round shape and uh, leaned up uh, in and the railway between became the main tourist attraction of Berlin, is the object of constant pilgrim uh, for couples in love and travelers. You can go for a walk to the tunnel at any time of year, but it is better in summer or autumn when nature paints as uh, the leaves uh, in incredible colors and shades from green to gold and crimson. In the tunnel, lights and shadows play in a visual way and photographers adore this place. 
importance of chosen the Harberg Road lift and Kamenets waterfall. During this time, you can enjoy the clean mountain air to your heart's content, observe hundreds year old uh, Christmas trees and pines, and uh, take wonderful photos. And already from the observation terrace of the mountain, there is an incredible, beautiful panorama of such mountain ranges. A few kilometers from the highway near the town of Skol, there are communist waterfall, Lake Sinivir and Sipit waterfall. Sinivir is a very beautiful, romantic, and extremely inspiring place in which you feel how you are filled uh, with uh, vital energy and natural strength. Lake Sinivir is recognized as uh, one of the seven wonders of Ukraine. You will see one of the most Carpathian waterfalls ship it. In the beer regulations uh, center, you will meet the master of the Carpathian Mountains, depicted on the coat of arms of uh, Transcarpathians as uh, a brown beer. Act of Canyon. The most famous is Act of Canyon on the Medway River, which is a part of the Busque Hard National Park. The canyon area is over 250 hectares of unique granite cliffs, boundaries, step, and aquatic ecosystem on one of the oldest bits of the Eurasia landmass. Every year, rock climbers, spelunkers, and rafting booths come here. Also, we have Malanka Fest, Srimni Tanos, and Trihagi Kat Fest. Welcome to Ukraine, the lands that make up Ukraine's modern territory are home to thousands of mysterious and the stories of hundreds of people, states, and culture. Thank you. Thank you so much for Ms. Karina. And then we will go to the next presenter by Sepha University from Libya, Mr. Hamza Yusuf Mohammed Madi. Yeah, for Mr. Hamza, the time is yours. Thank you. Hello. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Clear enough. Is it clear? Is it clear? Yeah. I'd like to start to say good morning, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, nice to be here with you. And also, I'd like to apologize because the presentation that I have is not as I wanted, but it talks about only one place that I have right now. So I will start with sharing the presentation. Can you see the screen? Yes. So today I'll be talking about one of the most like valuable places in the south of Libya, which is called Gabraon. Gabraon is an oasis with a large lake in Obari Desert region of Libya of the Libyan Sahara. Administ administratively, it's located in Wadi Al Hayat district of the Zan region, southwestern Libya. It's a natural art form deep in the Libyan desert, which managed to survive the harsh conditions and sand effects through the years. It has a unique landscape, as you can see in the picture. The lake is so blue, surrounded by palm trees and endless amount of sand. 
Its unique features made it one of the rarest lakes in the world. Gas, uh, gases, water, and high salt content that levels nearly five times more than the saline seawater enable swimmers to float easily without any effort. Even when throwing tons of iron material, it remains floating on the surface. So when I say that is, a lot of people, when they go there and they swim, they tend to float. No matter even if they try to swim like under deep, they can't. So it's, it's a fun thing to do, especially for people who can't swim, as I'm assuming most of you. It's also deemed for some destination for medical treatment because it's like really salty and especially it's good for the skin. Yeah, and other things that is medically appropriate. Beside, beside the lake, you can like dig up some cool water, fresh drinkable water, which like explains the growing palm trees on the side of the lake, which makes it like a very attractive place for tourists. The lake is about seven to five meters deep, oddly cooler on the surface than it is, it is meter and halfway below where it becomes significantly hotter as water depth increases. A basic tourist camp is located on the northern side shore, including an open patio, sleeping huts, and souvenir shop. In the winter, the lake is very salty. Swimming can be pleasant. Despite the salt water, crustaceans and mosquitoes are abundant. Well, like it means there's a lot of mosquitoes, especially in the summer. October it may be considered the best time to visit the visit it because the climate is milder. That means it's appropriate. So it's not hot, it's not cold, it's in between. Yeah, and that's it basically. Thank you all. And I apologize again for the lack of quality because we weren't ready enough for it. Am I clear? Yeah, okay. Thank you, Mr. Hamza, for the presentation. Thank you. Okay, so um, right now we have um, another presentation from Ukraine from Oles Honcha Nipro National University. Um, Ms. Darina Taranseko and Alexandra Shevchenko. Are you here? Hey, yes, hello. Good morning. Okay. Good morning, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I need just one minute to share my screen. But I suppose that I have some problem. I'm sorry for that. Okay, do you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, we will talk about Ukraine. I'm sorry, I have some problem. Yes. I'm sorry, I cannot um, turn on my camera because I have a bad connection. And uh, if I will uh, turn on my camera, I suppose that my presentation 
Um, so I can't. Uh... Yeah, okay, no worries. Sorry for that. Okay, Ukraine is a country of Eastern Europe. It has a long history, beautiful countryside, and warm uh, headed people who have a deep sense of culture and tradition. Ukraine lies on the shores of the Black Sea and the Sea of Azov. There are also many rivers and lakes. The most important uh, are the Dnipro, Dniester, and Southern Buch rivers and uh, Shatsky lakes. The climate of Ukraine is contentional. Winters are usually snowy and cold, and summers mostly hot. The temperature often rises about 3,800. Uh, Ukraine is an uh, independent and well-developed country. It is the world's largest producer of uh, sunflower oil, which is why the sunflower is the country's national flower. It is often called the bread bakers of Europe. As it produces and uh, exports enormous amounts of grain, sugar beet, vegetables, beef, and milk, apart from uh, agriculture and country, uh, is also known for its uh, aircraft and uh, engineer, industrials, and IT uh, specialist. It is also home to many talented science and uh, outstanding sportsmen. Um, because of the war, we have a lot of uh, misinformation. So murals have become a new place of interest. Artists are actively involved in the creation of such objects uh, throughout Ukraine. And they did uh, some exhibition like that, which you can see on the slide. Uh, it's about um, disinformation, as I said before. And so they try to... Um, to say people that we need to understand that it's not true. Um, Kyiv. Uh, Kyiv is rich of different places of interest. It, it refers to the oldest cities in the Eastern Europe. Kyiv is more than uh, uh, 1,500 uh, years old. Not surprising that people who want to meet the most uh, Remarkable landmarks come here. Tourist visit of Saint Sophia's Cathedral and Kiva Pichersk Lavra, where Telon Tadriski used visit and Krishatik, and take picture with uh, uh, Hedeki Hok monument, monument and uh, Panikovsky monument. And of course, nobody remain uh, indifferent after walking down through Volodymyr's Hill, thinking in its uh, grandly to the picture's quite podium. And uh, next one is uh, Sofia Cathedral. I will talk about uh, it more detailly. So um, uh, Saint Sofia Cathedral is a, a striking white building in the center of Kyiv. It's uh, topped with uh, attractive green and colored domes. It's no surprise that it's one of the seven wonders of Ukraine. Uh, um, of Ukraine, and Prince Yaroslav the Wise uh, gave order to build the cathedral in uh, um, 1037. Inside the um, church, there are a lot of uh, old uh, frescoes, of wall paintings, and uh, mosaics. They are still beautiful today, although they are almost 1,000 years old. Another one, it's a uh, Horodetsky building. Horodetsky building was finished in uh, 1902. It is worth seeing for the uh, mystical creatures made up of a uh, part of uh, other animals. For example, a creature with a lion's head, a goat's body, and a snake's tail. This uh, decorates the building. <clears throat> so because uh, of this, it is called of uh, the house of uh, um, uh, cameras. A cameras is a mystical creature. Not all of the decorations are animals. You can see flowers, mermaids, and sheep too. And Vladislav Hordetsky, the architect who designed it, is uh, uh, called the Gaudi of Kiev because his uh, buildings uh, looks like buildings in Barcelona by Antoni Gaudi. And another one, the Golden Gate, is another sign to build by Yaroslav the Wise in uh, 
uh, 11th century. This huge forest is an amazing uh, construction. It's one of uh, three cities gates built by Prince Yaroslav. All these uh, were strong and uh, protected the city well. And however, they become ruins uh, over the centuries. Then in the 1970s, the city um, authorized rebuilt parts of the Golden Gate to make a museum. It's a great place to learn about Kyiv history. And another one, it's the uh, Hanenko Museum. And uh, uh, Hanenko Museum, um, so it's uh, today uh, doing their best to shake over their images as a rather dull place. Um, where you can um, see endless it's it, um, which mean nothing to you. So instead they are now trying to bright exhibition alive. The Hanenko Museum in Kyiv uh, is no exception. The museum with is also known as the Museum of Western and Oriental Arts. Uh, started as a personal art collection of Bogdan and Varvara Hanenko. Uh, it contains a masterpiece of old famous artists. There is Egyptian uh, statues, Roman and Greek sculpture, icons, uh, uh, Persian uh, um, ceramics, uh, uh, textiles, jewelry, and uh, last more. And uh, about a little bit about who uh, were Bagdan and Varakhanenka. So Bagdan was a lover and a judge. And he married Varvara as a daughter of a very wealthy industrialist. And the two of um, them built up of a collection over there uh, 40 years together. And during the time, they dreamed of uh, opening a museum for their collection. And however, the museum uh, didn't open until after Bogdan died in uh, 1918. So and shortly after, Varvara gave the collection to give, and in uh, 1919, it's become uh, became a state museum. And uh, the collection at that time was large for a private collection, and since then, uh, the number of exhibition has uh, increased um, to uh, 13 times uh, their original size, and mainly thanks to the buying of other collection, and now there are more around uh, 25,000 exhibitions covering a huge geographical and uh, historical um, range. And now about the Parisia, my uh, colleague uh, will tell you about it. Uh, yes, I would like to tell you about the Parisia and Transcarpathians. So the Parisia. Uh, oh, sorry, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, the Parisia uh, district has its own history. Uh, the Parish, uh, the Parishka siege is a historical territory that was located in the south of Ukraine on the banks of the Dnipro uh, River from the 16th to the 18th centuries. And the Parisian siege was an important historical event uh, as it was a symbol of the struggle of the Ukrainian people for freedom and independence. Uh, Cossacks uh, were very, were one of the most important uh, political, social, cultural uh, movements of the territory of Ukraine. And the Parisian siege um, became the center of the Cossacks' uh, move, movements. Also, when the people hear the word, the word Hopak, uh, they may think of Ukrainian men in uh, loose fighting red or, or blue uh, trousers, dancing and kicking their legs to the side. But Hopak is a traditional Ukrainian Cossack dance, which goes uh, back centuries. Uh, this is also known as Boyovy Hopak or Fighting Hopak or Combat Hopak, uh, which is uh, also uh, popular in Ukraine, and there are almost uh, 10,000 uh, athletes all over the country. Also, there are um, combat uh, hopak clubs in Canada, the USA, and the other country. Uh, uh, also, I'd like to tell you about uh, Hotin uh, 
fortress. Next slide, please. Uh, Ukraine, uh, of course, has some of the most impressive castles, uh, and one of uh, them is Hotin uh, uh, Castle. Uh, as you approach it, uh, you get a sense of the important role it played in the past of uh, in defending the local area. The castle stands on the right bank of the Dniester River and from the top of its uh, massive walls. And five meters uh, thick, it is possible to see far into the distance, making it difficult to capture the fortress by a surprise uh, attack. And the Hotin Fortress became a state historical and culture, cultural reserve. It is counted uh, among the seven wonders of Ukraine. Uh, indeed, uh, this building uh, has something mysterious uh, and explored it. Uh, and it says that uh, Prices treasures are hiding in this place, and, and let's see the video about Hotin. Yes, one more time. I need to show you. Um, Okay, uh, next slide. Uh, next places I'd like uh, you to tell about is Transcarpathia. This is the youngest, youngest of the Ukrainian regions and it's situated in the far west of the country. Uh, the area of the uh, Cenever National uh, Park is a corner of beautiful nature. Uh, in the Carpathian Mountains, and it is the biggest mountain lake in Ukraine. Uh, geologists uh, think it's about 10,000 years old, 
and around uh, this bright blue lake uh, is a forest that is about uh, 100 years old. Uh, Cinever is also called uh, sea eye uh, because there is an um, island in the middle of the lake which uh, makes it look like an eye. Sometimes after heavy rain, there is a lot of water in the lake and the island uh, disappears. Uh, there is a legend about Cinever uh, it uh, says that the tears of the girl uh, called Sin uh, formed the lake uh, when her father killed the man she loved. Uh, actually, four mountain stream, uh, streams and underground water fill the lake with water. And the deepest point of the lake is about 23 meters below uh, the surface. And also in this photo, you can see uh, Sofievsky Park. It is located in Uman, Ukraine. This amazing, amazing park is over uh, 200 years old. Uh, and it's got a blue lake, uh, fountains, waterfalls, gardens, and green uh, woods. It's uh, uh, also, uh, it was the idea of Count uh, Pototsky and hundreds of people worked on it. And it's a land of Greek and Roman legends. And you can see statues of well-known characters, such as Venus, Cupid, and Orpheus. Uh, today, the Fivsky Park is also in, uh, in center of the uh, scientific research. It has got almost uh, 3,000 types of plants. Uh, these include trees, flowers, and uh, bushes from bushes from Ukraine and uh, other countries. Okay, next slide. Uh, uh, someday uh, that uh, every Ukrainian should climb Hoverla and uh, every people once in their lifetime. It is the highest and the most climbed mountain in the Chernohora range. Uh, between uh, this is about uh, 17,000 uh, people climb it every year, and it's also a location for winter sports. And the name of Hoverla uh, comes from uh, Hovar, the Hungarian word of, uh, for snowy castle, uh, a fitting name because the top of the mountain is covered with snow until late uh, June. And volcano. Okay, Walking up Haverla became popular with tourists in the late 19th century and getting to the peak um, doesn't require mounting equipment, just good boots and perhaps some uh, walking poles. Uh, however, because the trail is long and the final uh, ascent steep is still uh, a challenge. And if you don't want to rush, you can camp on the western side uh, of the mountain and uh, so spread the walk over a couple of days. Okay, uh, Dorina can carry on and continue my speech. Yes, let's talk about Odessa. So Odessa is a historic city on the Black Sea coast, and it also offers numerous opportunities for outdoor activities. The city has beautiful beaches. In fact, it is one of the few places in Ukraine with sandy beaches, not uh, pebbles. And Arcadia Beach is clean, safe, and has attractions such as water slides and a fun area for children. The family members who prefer uh, sightseeing should head for one of the many historical uh, cities uh, sites in the city. For example, the famous Potemkin stamps are probably Odessa's best known landmark, but the Baroque Opera House is also worth it a visit, so you can take a tour of the old uh, catacombs under the city also, and relax in the beautiful parks or visit to the zoo, where you can see elephants, lions, and other exotic animals for Africa and Asia, plus some of Ukrainian's rare birds of uh, prey. So we can say that Odessa have uh, so many different sites. And another one, um, it's uh, Lviv. Uh, so, uh, the largest city in the western Ukraine is more than uh, 700 years old and it is an important center of culture. The city has got a lot of offer, um, art, culture, museums and uh, extraordinary architecture. 
There is an uh, international opera house, Philharmonic and uh, chamber orchestras, and a jazz street festival in uh, June each year. So if uh, visual um, arts are more to your taste, you can also wander around some of the city's uh, contemporary art galleries and visit the uh, National Museum or explore the architecture in the small um, cobbled streets and uh, uh, contrasts in the old town. If culture is uh, not your scene, uh, then um, there are plenty of uh, shops uh, and uh, cafes to hang out in. For um, more active uh, changes, you can climb the um, 400 steps uh, to the top of the town house bell tower and enjoy a fabulous view of the city. And the last one, it's uh, about, it's a little bit general information. It's about Ukrainian Baroque. So Baroque architecture started in Italy in the 16th century and spread across Europe and European and colonies around the world. It was typical of churches during the uh, counter-reformation um, uh, when the um, Catholic Church wanted to attract people to their religion through architecture and art. And the new churches uh, had complex geometrical design. They often had uh, symmetrical features and architecture used to cold uh, inside and outside to decorate some of the buildings uh, features. In Ukraine, the first Baroque churches uh, appears in the Cossack period in the 17th century. They were different from the style in other parts of Europe. Uh, here, I, um, I, architectures combine some of the uh, design elements of European Baroque with the traditional styles in Ukraine, and the walls were plainer and more classical than in Italy or other southern uh, European countries, and this gave the buildings a uh, calmer, more balanced look. There are two main styles of Baroque churches, and the main feature of the first type are um, um, something like um, a rectangular shape with uh, parallel angels and a very high um, sailing. And this is something but not always dumb. And churches of the second type have a laid in the shape uh, of a cross, similar to the older traditional wooden churches found in Ukraine. And there could be one, five, or nine uh, domes. And many people look at this, um, look at the outside of Sophia Cathedral and give and think um, it is an uh, outstanding example of Baroque architecture. But um, it is not until they go inside and see the 11th century. Uh, Byzantine decoration that they realize that cathedral is much older and it uh, was uh, built about um, 600 years before Baroque became popular in uh, Ukraine. So, and thank you so much for your attention. Yes, thank you so much. Okay, thank you for your presentation. And then we will go to, to the next speaker, uh, Ms. Vivian Anjiang from Beru Technical and Vocational Colleagues from Kenya. Yeah, for Vivian Anjiang, the time is yours. Thank you. Okay. Nice. Okay. 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 Not 
Hey, I'm Viviana Chen from Kenya. Yeah. Am I clear enough? Yes. Kenya, the best tourism, Kenya, the best tourism destination. Fort Jesus Museum, it was built in 1593 to 1596 in the shape of a man. Here's a photo of Fort Jesus Museum. The next Kenya tourist attraction is Health Kitchen. It's located in Malindi, Kenya, in Marafa. And these are some pictures of Hell's Kitchen. The colored canoes of Marafa, also known as Hell's Kitchen, is an old sandstone canyon outside of Malindi, Kenya, known locally as Nyari, the place broken by itself. It was once a great sandstone ridge worn by rain and floods into a series of junked gorges. We have Amboseli in Rift Valley, located at Loitoktok. Mombasa Hala Park, located at Mombasa, Kenya. Mombasa Hala Park, located at Mombasa, we have giraffes. Next tourist attraction in Kenya, Lake Nakuru, located at Nakuru. This place is, is best known for beautiful flamingos with amazing features. Next, Mount Kenya. Mount Kenya is the highest mountain in Kenya. 
and the second highest in Africa after Kilimanjaro. The highest peaks of the mountain are Batin, Nelion, and Point Lenana. It also has an amazing features. We have the elephants, buffaloes, black fronted dikers, mole rats, bush bugs, and among others. We also have birds. The olive pigeon, African green pigeon, red fronted parrot, and also a plant life as a tourist attraction. Mount Kenya is a mountain alpine vegetation like giant ground cells, lobelias, EPC. Next tourist attraction is Savo, located at Voi, is the most Kenyan largest national park. Savo is made up for two separate parks, Savo East National Park and Savo West National Park, located at coast province of Kenya. And uh, in this place, We have elephant as the most tourist attraction. The next tourist attraction in Kenya is Diani Beach, one of the best beach in Kenya located in Kwale County in the coastal region of Kenya. They, they have the most white sand beaches, blue ocean, and they're nice for sand baths. Here are some photos of Diani Beach. The next tourist attraction in Kenya, we have Masai Mara. Masai Mara, also sometimes spelled Masai Mara and locally known simply as the Mara, is a large national game reserve in Narok, Kenya, contiguous with the Serengeti National Park in Tanzania. It is named in the honor of the Masai Mara people. And uh, we have hippo, giraffe, gazelle, baboons, crocodile, black lion, rhino, warthog, among others, as tourist attraction. And here, these are some pictures of, these are Maasai, the Maasai people. And, And we, in, in Masai Mara National Reserve, all the big five are found in this site. Yeah, we, ha we have the elephants, leopards, lions, buffalo, and rhino. Thank you for your time.
Okay, thank you for um sharing the places in Kenya. Um Miss Vivian Achi. And now um we are moving on to the next presenter from South Africa from University of Venda. Tendai Mutambo and Gibson Mikioni. Uh, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Sure. Should I start presenting? Yeah. You can share your presentation now. Thank you. Okay. So can you see my screen from your side? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um may proceed well my my name is Tende Mutambu and I'm in I am an international student at the University of Venda. I'm originally from South Africa I'm originally from Zimbabwe so oh uh, yeah it keeps on making on and I'm originally from Zimbabwe but currently studying at the University of Venda, which is in South Africa. Yes, so my colleague here is gonna start. Something. Okay, let me start. Uh, uh, great, Zimbabwe is a diverse country. It has a lot of things to offer in terms of food, tourist resort and many others. We are just going to speak about the few that are that are in in the Zimbabwe. So number one is the Matopo Hills. Matopo Hills is mostly known for Matopo Hills is mostly known for its beautiful um, views. They are eccentric views and also breathtaking. So Matopo Hills is where we find the graves of, of the two popular kings, popular Ndebele kings, which are King Muslikazi and King Lobengula. King Muslikazi was the father of King Lobengula. So we also find the grave of Sister John Rhodes and, and his friend Robert Moffat. Who Sister John Rhodes is the name, is the man who was who had the Cape to Cairo dream. And he was one of the colonizers of Zimbabwe. So let me move on to to Great Zimbabwe. Uh, Great Zimbabwe. Great Zimbabwe. This is the historical, the historical site where the nation derived its unique name. Zimbabwe can be broken into three parts. Z, the Z stands for great. Mba, house, way of stone. It consists of the of three quarters, which is the king's quarters, the queen's quarters, and then the local people's quarters. Great Zimbabwe was built in in the twelfth century, and people moved away 
during the, sixth, the 16th century. It was a central trading place where we find that they were trading gold and many other minerals with other tribes such as the Swahili and, and many other tribes. So Zimbabwe, in Great Zimbabwe, in Great Zimbabwe, it was a monument which was built with no mortar. We find that there are seven, the walls are seven to eight meters high, yet they do not have anything to bind them. They are built from granite stone and they are built using dry bunting. So in Great Zimbabwe, we also find the the Hungwe bird, they found seven, archaeologists found seven Hungwe birds and they were shipped to South Africa for examination and to check what kind of stone they were made from. And it was found that they were made from a substone. So the Hungwe bird is an an important bird to the country because when you look at the flag of Zimbabwe, you find that the Ungwe bird is on the flag. So that is pretty much about Great Zimbabwe. Then we have the Inyanga Mountain. The Inyanga Mountain, well, it's also a natural tourist resort. You find that it's a mountain with eccentric views. They are breathtaking views. It is located in Mutare near Chipinge. And it is also considered to be a holy place or a sacred place by the local people. Well, the mountain itself, because it's holy, the local people used, used it for rain-making ceremonies so that they ask rain, rain from the ancestors and they receive rain. So when you're touring the, the, the mountain, if you're a group of students or pupils, you have to ask for a tour guide and also uh, the elders. The, in the mountain, you are not, you are not really, uh, you're not really allowed to talk about the negatives, neither the positives of the mountain because, because if you say something bad, yeah, some things may happen to you. And you might also happen to stumble upon wild animals such as baboon, a baboon, or a snake. And let me give over to my colleague. Okay. Now taking all by his gifts on make you on. And I'll be starting with, with Kinoi caves. Historically, Shinoi caves, it was, there was a king who was, the, who was presiding over the place was called King Shinoi. And Shinoi caves is, is known for its various stuff such as, it was used by, by the Shona to protect themselves against the, the foreign invasion. And also it is called the sleeping water because it is it is still and on like stagnant and furthermore it is it is blue in its color and what one can do in this water is you can swim or you can do scuba diving cave exploration etc cetera, etc cetera. so that's more about this cave chinoi which is called chinoi caves and moving on to the another, which is Victoria Falls. Historically, this the Victoria Falls was discovered by Dr. David Livingstone, a man who named it after 
Queen Victoria. In, in, that was in 1895. However, this the Victoria Falls, according to to Tongani tribe, the Victoria Falls they they call it the boiling water. And also the Shonas, they also have a certain name for it, which is called Mosiatunya, which means the smoke that thunders. However, furthermore, the Victoria Force, there are various activities which one can partake when it comes to Victoria Force, such as swimming, wading across the, the, the falls. And they fall at this place, there are like camping sites, which was offered also at Victoria Falls. Furthermore, furthermore, and we also have parks like in Zimbabwe, such as Wangi National Park, and this one is situated in the north, in the north western corner of Zimbabwe, on the main road that is between what Blawayo and Victoria Falls, bordering what, bordering towards Botswana. And this one, the Wangi National Park is called Mosque. They call it House of what? The House of the Big Five. This is the place where you find the interesting animals, the Big Five, such as the leopards the lions, the elephants, the rhinos, to mention but a few. However, at these parks, you can also find some interesting animals such as the black cobras. You also find the black mambas. Among the, it's one of they call it black mamba. And also it's or the black mouthed. Yeah, and that's it about the place. And that was the presentation from Zimbabwean kids who are currently studying at the University of Venda. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, um, the presenters from South Africa. So now, uh, right now we would like to invite everyone to take a few pictures together. So uh, we would like everyone to please turn on your camera. Yeah, so everyone can turn on your camera and we will take the photo in the count of three. One two, three. Okay, wait. Okay, let's take another one. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, thank you everyone for the amazing presentations uh, about your country. Okay. Okay, so now as we already come to the end of day one of this wonderful cultural exchange presentation uh, co-hosted by STICOM and also ITEA, 
we would like to express our deepest appreciation for everyone who has participated in making this event a great success. Throughout the evening, we have had the opportunity to, lead, to learn about the tourism destination of our respective countries. And we also learn uh, a lot about um, our countries. Tomorrow, we'll be listening to the presentations from the other student representatives about the authentic cuisines in their country that we must try if you are visiting their countries. So, okay, thank you for Miss Aisha. Finally, we come to the end of cultural exchange today we would like to say thanks again for all students for their wonderful information thank you for your sharing your knowledge we hope this information will be beneficial for our audience and i hope we can meet again in another event and continue for second day tomorrow with the same time also i would like to thanks for all participants for attending this cultural exchange today and making this even more interesting. At last, we hope to have more collaboration in the future with all of you. The cultural exchange for today and here, we hope to see you soon. Thank you and have a nice day for everyone. Thank you for participating. Yeah. yeah. Thank you and see you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much for everyone. Yeah, you can set anything for Thank you very much, <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Presenter. See you. See you. Thank you so much. See you. See you, Mr. See you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, don't is. I don't know. 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 I yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Kamapita. Thank you, Kamapita. Thank you, Thank you. 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 Thank Kuda ku hos, kuda ku hos ini.